I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. Traveling teaches about other cultures and customs, and Ann Arbor takes pride in their relationships with countries throughout the world. Watch as the city celebrates a long-running sister city relationship. Ann Arbor was one of the first to call Hakone a sister city in 1969. Ohio gozaimasu. We're celebrating the 50th anniversary between Hikone, Japan and Ann Arbor, Michigan, our sister city, Hikone. And we were part of the sister city committee that traveled to Hikone in 1999. Yes. My wife and I and a delegation of Ann Arborites visited Hikone this past summer. It's an amazing, beautiful place with warm, friendly people. Uh, we have so much to learn from each other, and I'd really encourage folks here in Ann Arbor to do all they can to, to learn from Hikone and to experience it themselves. To commemorate the 50th anniversary, a cherry tree was planted at Cobblestone Farm. Cherry trees are emblematic both of Michigan and of Japan, and so it's incredibly appropriate that we plant a cherry tree here to honor 50 years of friendship. I and you two, we consider ourselves the citizen of the world, you know, and it's getting smaller and smaller, you know, so I think especially now it's more important that we have, you know, a great uh, relationship. relationship. It's all about building, building relationships. Uh, it, it, it truly is a small world and staying connected with our friends in Hikone means a lot. Stay tuned and we'll be back shortly with more news and information. The Huron River is the hub of Ann Arbor. Our drinking storm and wastewater all call the river home, but our wastewater has to go through an extensive treatment process before it can safely inhabit the county's major waterway. 18 million gallons of water a day come from our city drains to the wastewater treatment plant. What this plant is primarily designed for is to remove phosphorus. So we try to concentrate those bugs and those microorganisms to be able to keep that phosphorus out from going to the river, which keeps the river from getting too much plant growth, which takes and removes oxygen, which hurts the fish, which also slows down the river. So you want to keep that plant growth to the right proportion, and one of the ways we do that is by not letting that phosphorus get out into there. This is what happens to our water, and they should know what they should put in the toilet and what they should not put in the toilet because I think that's really important. There are some things that are not helpful to this process. This is a living, breathing organism. So just being mindful of what you put down in your sink, that's what helps us. With an unseasonably warm autumn, there's still plenty of time to get out and ride. But before the wheels hit the pavement, learn some tips to keep your bike in tip-top shape in this month's City Roundup in 60. Hello, I'm Doug Martell with the Ann Arbor Police Department. We're going to talk about a pre-check on your bikes. We, I call it the ABC. You're getting ready to dust your bikes off for the season. So A is for air. Make sure that your tires are properly inflated, that you have good tread on your tires. B for brakes. You want to make sure that your brakes are working properly because if you're going, you're going to need to stop at some point. So make sure that your brakes are working properly. If you need help with those, I'm sure your local bike shop will help you out. And C is for chain. You need to have a chain that's, that's working well, that's not rusty and, uh, and corroded. So make sure that your chain is working. If it's rusty and it doesn't look like it's going to take any lube, your local bike shop can help you out getting the right length of chain for you. Thanks for watching. Please ride safely. Enjoy the ride. Since 1997, EdgeFest has been bringing some of the best names in the jazz industry together for a one-of-a-kind experience in Ann Arbor. 
This year, the four-day Experimental Jazz and Creative New Music Festival will explore the rich contributions of West Coast artists with the theme, Out West. Joining me is Deanna Relier, director of EdgeFest. Welcome back to the show, Deanna. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Why don't you tell me about EdgeFest, kind of how it got started, because you've been there since the beginning. Right. I, I uh, founded the Concert House in 1984, and uh, soon afterwards, a gentleman by the name of Dave Lynch came to the house to various concerts, and mm -hmm. his interest uh, was in this kind of music, this uh, you know, jazz that really moves the music forward. Uh, you could call it avant-garde, you could call it creative music. It encompasses a lot of styles, actually. Many of the artists in this music are classical trained music musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they come from a wide variety of background and then they create new stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Dave uh, actually got the concert house to start presenting some of these groups that would come through, and many were, were very distinguished groups. Dave Douglas Quintet from Chicago at the time, um, and others. And then one weekend, we had three such groups who wanted to play at the concert house. And we thought, huh, well, let's do it and call it a festival. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of worked yeah, out. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so it was just a, a lot of fun and a very, very um, rewarding. Obviously, it was something special to and, all of you, yeah. And there is, and we found then that there was a real community of music lovers who who were interested in this music and uh, that community has stayed with us all through these years supporting and coming and creating new community and the edge fest uh, and he Dave Lynch was the director of, the, of this edge fest for 10 years mm -hmm. the Carrytown concert house presented presents the Edge Fest, mm -hmm. and he's the one who led it for 10 years. And uh, then he, he bowed out, and I took it over. And really, the 10 years that I was the executive director of the concert house and supporting him and his work was a real education mm -hmm. uh, for me musically. And by after 10 years, I felt I could, I could maybe take over. Take over. And uh, it's it's just a very interesting project that has grown from this grassroots beginning to an internationally acclaimed festival. Uh, it's, it's grown quite a bit because, like you said at the beginning, it was just like you kind of stumbled yeah. upon it. But now it's four days. Four it's days. It's grown to four days. Yeah. We, we start on a Wednesday. This is all tradition that's kind of been burned in for mm -hmm. a while. On Wednesday night... We start, which at is the this year. House. It'll be October sixteenth. <clears throat> October sixteenth, and <clears throat> there are two groups that perform uh, at six and then at seven. Uh, I could I could say that we open with a very well known pianist in this in this music, Lucian Bon, who's uh, European but in the States, and Alex Harding, a saxophonist who. Uh, grew up in Detroit, who's, mm -hmm. who's uh, a Detroiter, who's been playing with all the greats. Well, that's one of the things. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned the theme this year is out west, but okay. it's kind of meld, like melding well, with two we, kinds mm -hmm. of Detroit jazz artists and out people from each, the West Coast. Each festival has a theme. Yeah. Uh, last year it was Chicago, and uh, there's been uh, a a great CD set out uh, from the music that, of that festival mm -hmm. uh, that's on the front of the Downbeat magazine today. Mm -hmm. um, but this year we decided that th there's, there's a certain strain of, of music that comes from the West Coast mm -hmm. uh, ether 
Uh, and there are many very distinguished artists who don't get a chance to come this way all that often because it's expensive, frankly, the travel, yeah. et cetera. But um, uh, it's, it's interesting that most all of these people on the festival, even if they don't live in the West Coast, they've been influenced by it or yeah. have spent time there or, or collaborate with artists from the West Coast. Um, the West Coast people who are performing on Wednesday is this Oli Amy Thomas, who's a fabulous saxophone clarinetist person who uh, performs with his wife, who's a singer and, and poetic speaker. Uh, and then with his brother, Ken Thomas, who happens to live in Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. and uh, two other musicians from Detroit. Um, so it's a, it's a very... You're sort of hearing the, the sounds of the West, but it's bringing artists all together yes, to right. create the sound. And there's definitely uh, a West Coast influence here. Um, and on Wednesday night, there, we, between the first two shows and the last show, we have a dinner for all of the people who buy passes and who are sponsors and who are volunteers, and there are many volunteers. Uh, at Faustini's Vinegar and Oil across the street. So we all traipse across the street. Oh, yeah. Nice. And uh, Jill, who's the owner there, is, uh, helps us greatly. Um, so, and then we come back to the house for the last show. Thursday night this year, it's, it's new. We are, uh, we've often had performances in other spaces, but uh, not only, only the last one, which will be in the church, mm -hmm. in the Bethlehem United Church. Uh, but Thursday night is going to be at the new jazz club, the Blue Llama, mm -hmm. downtown. Yep. Dave Sharp there came to me and said, hey, how about us participating in Edgefest? That's a great idea. And uh, it, I, it really is. It's a beautiful club, of course. And, um, and we have just the things for that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the principal... West Coast artist on that night is Myra Melford, who's a fantastic pianist who, who's played all over the world, who's just a great person mm -hmm. and, and a wonderful musician. She's playing, <coughs> well, another one is Vinnie Golia. She's playing with Vinnie Golia, who's a reed guy from L.A., very distinguished, uh, longtime composer and, and performer of that music. Um, and Kyle Brookman, a young oboist who got his degree here and moved out to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that that uh, evening at at the uh, Blue Lama will also feature U of M students performing with a piece by Myra. Um, so there are a lot of collaborators. We actually are sort of out of time. I know we didn't get to get through. The festival is October 16th through October 19th. So you right. have your four days. You can get passes. Oh, right. You can get a pass. You can get a day pass. Mm -hmm. You can go online and, and uh, reserve for uh, just a single concert within a day. Yeah, so you can go on Carrie Town's mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. You can kind of figure out if you yeah. want to go do the, the whole four is, days, yeah. if you want right. to just pick and choose what you want to do. And you can see the full lineup of all mm -hmm. the artists as well. All right. So before we go, why don't you just tell people why you think that they should come to this year's Edge Fest? Well, there, there's a tremendous variety, tremendous variety in uh, the artists, in the music, there are many, many of our own local artists who are performing, and uh, and it's it opens your ears to the future, <laughs> or the present and the future, and uh, many of these artists are are seasoned people who have grown up in all sorts of music, so you're seeing the, a combination of where they are now. Sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Deanna. Thank you. For more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, comment, and share. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI.